Hello, in this video we look at rotational invariance, which deals with rotating the axes through the origin and that not changing the underlying function of the density of the variable that we're studying. And I'll go through uh, four to six examples depending upon how you count on illustrating this and, and by the end hopefully it'll make more sense. So first let's look at what a rotation matrix is. Now we're not going to go into depth of the rotation matrix, that's not the gist of this video, but it's a square matrix and it's a rotation matrix if and only if the transpose is equal to the inverse of the original square matrix O and the determinant is 1. Now what that means is you're rotating the axis counterclockwise or the right hand rule and now some include uh, rotation matrices with a, a minus one and those are often called improper rotations um, let's let x be a k by one vector then y is a rotation of x so rotational invariance mean the density of f of x is rotationally invariant if the density of f of x is the same as the density of this rotation. And now that I look at this, this f and the, well, yeah, it's saying the f's are the same. Um, and, only, and it only depends upon the length of the original vector x. So let's go through some examples. So first example, let's let x be multivariate normal, k dimensions, mean zero, uh, variance, sigma times i so all the components are independent of this vector so the density is written like this and let's let O be a k by k rotation matrix and let y be uh, O times x and let's find the density of y so to do this um, we have to back solve for x and then we take the Jacobian, which is the partial derivatives of O to the Y with respect to this vector um, X. And uh, take and anyway, it turns out to be just the uh, rotation matrix, derivative of the rotation matrix, which is 1. Now, note that the length of X is the same as the uh, rotation of X right because uh, rotation matrices preserve length and this is is this and o, o x is y y and this is also you know this is the identity matrix so these are all the same but this is saying that the length of the um, you know, when you back solve for x these are all the same length of vectors that's kind of the beauty of of an orthogonal matrix or a rotation matrix so the density of y is you you plug in this transformation into the density of x take it times Jacobian which is 1 and then you plug everything in and you get this then you distribute that transpose and you get this but that's the identity so you or or you can think of it as um, this you know this product has the same length as x so right, so this is actually the same length. Or you could think of this as the identity and y transpose y has the same length as x. So really these functional forms are exactly the same. And so they're um, rotationally invariant. Now let's let, um, I'm gonna call this 2a because we're gonna do two illustrations with the same thing. Um, let X be a uniform distribution over the interior of a sphere with radius one. So that means that this is the density. So this is the volume of a sphere in K dimensions. And that's a K by one vector. So you invert and multiply, you get this. And notice that the length of all the vectors have to be less than or equal to one. Then if we take a rotation of x, which is this, back solve for x, Jacobian's 1, you know, all these, uh, this length is, is the same as this thing with the same as this thing, with, which we know is less than or equal to 1. So all these uh, rotated vectors have to be less than or equal to 1. 
and to find the density of y we plug in our substitution in the density of x times Jacobian which is 1 and since there's no x's we get the same thing but that's the density of x so this is a rotationally invariant uh, function but now let's look at something um, interesting that we've been doing the past few videos is we look at this transformation now x is again this uh, uniform distribution over the interior of a sphere and if we look at this distribution and um, we note that the length of this is 1 so these are all z is like all vectors of length 1 and um, we, we showed in this video that f of z is a constant okay and and actually we're in when we get to example 3b we're going to illustrate why this is true with a picture all right and if you want to see sort more of a mathematical proof of why then you go to this video um, so in number three Example three, we're going to look at a uniform distribution over a square. And the square is from minus one to one in each direction. X and X1 and X2 are independent. And so this area is, is four. So the density is one fourth, so it integrates to one. Now let's look at a rotation of our X coordinates. And it's this. Back solve for X, Jacobian is one. Now to find the density of y, we put this substitution in for the x density, which is one fourth, and it's the same density. So they are rotationally invariant. But let's look at this example. So z is x over the length of x, and um, my big note is that f of z is not constant and some of these uh, the previous videos I was doing that we were generating points around a circle or around a sphere and we had to use transformations like this but we said that when we're in this setting you can't use this transformation because it doesn't create a uniform distribution around the circle and and I'm getting ready to explain why that's the case so Note that all these are of length 1, right? So the original x were between minus 1 and 1, minus 1 and 1, and we're randomly putting points in here. But this transformation takes every vector and bumps it down to this circle, right? So we are every, every point here is around this circle. But notice that if we're a, a point on the interior, and then we do this transformation, it gets shoved to the circle. Wherever we are, that whoop, transformation gets it shoved to the circle. But this point right there has higher probability. And the reason is all these points on here going through that transformation get shoved to that point. Where this point, you know, all these points get shoved to this point or transformed to that point. So the probability of being here is not the same as the probability of being here. So we're not creating a uniform distribution around the circle um, if we use X where it's a ra you know randomly in this cube. Now in example 2B, we the density was uniform on this circle. But notice that if we're to be on a point here, it's only points on this vector that get extended to this point. And actually, and so wherever you are, this point is all these vectors extended to that point. And so the probability of being here is actually the same as the probability of being here because all those, the probabilities are the same. But if we use the square, the probability of this point is not the same as the probability of this point. All right, so now one more example that is not rotationally independent. If we let X be a multivariate normal, mean zero, and some variance covariance matrix, then the density of X is this. It's multivariate normal. Let's let this be a rotation. Back solve for X, Jacobian's one. 
Now to find the density of y, we put this uh, these values in for the density of x, take it times the Jacobian. So we put this in for the x's in our original, we get this. And then when you solve this or simplify it or transpose that, this density is not the same functional form as the original density. So this so x, this distribution, is not rotationally invariant. Well, anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.